Hi, welcome to this fireside chat. It's good to be with you all on what today is a rather uh, overcast and rainy day. I want to say a big thank you to uh, Judy Zerubic who makes this uh, uh, recording come alive because she's the one that controls all the technology and makes it work so well. If it was a uh, switched role, it'd look like, well, it just wouldn't look very good. So in this time of pandemic, I find myself relishing the humor I find in the midst of all the challenges. It gives me courage and a, and a positive attitude. Since Sunday was Father's Day, and since I'm a dad with terrible dad jokes, here's a dad joke about gaining positivity. I know, I know, dad jokes are real groaners, like this image would suggest. With that kind of humor, we sometimes just want to sneak away. Some physicians feel the need to butter up those of us who have indulged a bit too much while staying at home. I often say that I'm short for, for my weight. However, we interact with the outside world, we must keep our distance to protect one another. From the large numbers of people not yet wearing masks at the grocery stores, there seem to be many putting their heads in the sand. When we cannot make a timely appointment to make repairs on our vehicles due to the backlog, some of us get creative. Knowing how much of a fan I am of Star Trek The Next Generation, here's a joke that might take a little while to sink in. After all, sufficient data looks like this. During the slow reopening of the province, careful listening is essential to understanding the communication from our public health authorities. Uh, but summer beckons us with warmth and with a blazing sun. During June, I have been holding up the seven grandfather teachings to honor the spiritual and practical wisdom of our indigenous neighbors. Now, while our ancestors perceived indigenous spiritual practices as somehow less or inferior to the spiritual understandings of the Christian faith, still indigenous people persisted. We have much to learn as we engage in dialogue with our indigenous siblings and neighbors. However, we can only learn if we dare to listen and to listen carefully without interrupting. The brokenness of our relations with this country's first peoples requires it. If we dare to listen, we live into bravery. Bravery in the Ojibwe spiritual tradition is represented by the bear. The mother bear's priority is to protect her cubs no matter how afraid she may feel. She faces her fears, confronting the challenges of life regardless of the cost. Yet mother bear is not just about bluster and fight. She is about balance. Even while she is willing to face whatever challenges may come, she is careful to rest and even to play, teaching her cubs that bravery is also found in recognizing your own need for balance in life. That balance provides the inner strength to face life's difficulties. That balance recognizes that being yourself is to be brave. To be yourself is to follow what you believe and what you know is right. How do you know? Because it benefits the community, the family, 
and one's own self. By living a life of brave balance, you can make positive choices lived by your convictions. If you run away from your fears, you cannot live your life because you're always haunted by your fears. If, however, you face your fears bravely, you allow yourself to live your life authentically. For our indigenous neighbors and siblings, they have had to face their fears through the terrible realities they live with within the system we have established. Our ancestors created a racist system in this country that classifies them as, as less and as unworthy of being treated as fully human, as not fully deserving equity. Indigenous people rightly fear what more they might have to suffer in our hands. Consider the two indigenous people killed in New Brunswick less than three weeks ago. Consider the running down of a First Nations chief by an RCMP cruiser in Fort McMurray. Consider the year old final report of the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls Commission upon which the government has yet to act. Consider the five year old final report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission out of which maybe only a dozen calls to action out of the total of 94 have actually seen some very slow progress. Indigenous peoples have good reason to fear, yet they live with bravery in the face of that fear, lifting up what they know is right for the benefit of our wider Canadian Federation. I watched the movie Blood Quantum a couple of weeks ago. It is a Canadian movie written, directed, acted, and produced by Indigenous filmmakers. It is a zombie movie. And yes, I know that seems an odd thing to talk about in this fireside chat, but it reveals an intriguing Indigenous perspective on our Canadian society. The police chief of the nameless First Nations community who's pictured here, discovers that a virus has infected the white people neighboring the reserve. It turns them into zombies. Now, he is bitten, but he discovers he's immune to the virus because he's indigenous. His father, the actor portrayed here, joins to him in fighting the zombies while isolating the reserve to protect their indigenous community. However, the police chief's son has gotten his girlfriend pregnant, but his girlfriend is white. Would the half-breed child be immune to the virus? I have thought a lot about the movie. What is the fear the people in the movie face on the reserve? Will they become infected with the white virus, killing them all and robbing them of the very life they cherish? They face the fear eventually keeping their reserve clean of any white people, all except for the police chief's daughter-in-law. The survivors on the reserve look at the police chief's daughter-in-law with suspicion and with dread. And just before the child is born, she's bitten. After giving birth to a healthy, uninfected son, she begs the police chief to kill her before she becomes a zombie killing those she has come to love, and all without a thought. In the end, with many tears, the police chief does kill her. Now, it is a terribly bleak movie. But notice how it speaks powerfully of the assimilation the zombie virus depicts. That is the fear every indigenous person feels each day within a society created to do just that assimilate them. That is why I was delighted when Raylan Wolf was willing to dance her jingle dress dance for us two summers ago. The jingle dress dance is a dance of healing. However, we need first to repent of our past efforts toward assimilation. We need to repent of our current structures of racism. We need to accept our privilege in the structures from which we, as white people, benefit. We need to pay attention to the virus of hate buried within ourselves and within our society systems. It takes 
bravery. In facing our own fears of culpability, we can open to the healing we so desperately need. In our generation's long process of healing, we can foster reconciliation. However, reconciliation will not be one grand act that ends it all for good. Instead, reconciliation will be built upon small acts and gestures with and among all our relations. I want to share a video which is a praise song from the Australian megachurch group Hillsong United. It takes the first verse of the beloved song Amazing Grace and weaves it into their original composition. It is called Broken Vessels. First, I want to note that the hymn Amazing Grace was written by a slave trader even as he was still trading slaves from Africa to the Americas. It took him over three years to completely divorce himself from the despicable practice of slavery. He was certainly a broken person, a wretched soul for sure. Yet as our faith assures us, even broken vessels can be redeemed. When we find vestiges of bigotry and racism in our own hearts, God is there to help us root them out, to heal us, and to challenge us to bravely change the structural racism by which we white folk benefit in our society. Second, I want you to notice some of the imagery in this video. Notice how ordinary everyone seems yet how few people of color are featured. This is still the white gaze. Notice the initial imagery of a fairy. Just as following the way of Jesus ferries us to a new shore, a new perception of the world, and a new purpose in how we best live. Notice the fishermen out on the lake, alone, just as fisher folk Simon Peter, Andrew, James, and John were before Jesus called them to discipleship. Notice the river rowers cannot see where they are going, but they know they can rely on the coxswain who guides them, just as we rely on God to guide us to where we cannot yet perceive. Notice the fountain and the washing of hands which reflect, reflects our symbol of being born into a new life through baptism, cleansed of our brokenness, ready to take up our new life of faith in the way of Jesus. That is the light into which the final scenes of the video take us. In that light, in light of our brokenness, in light of our desire to heal all our relations with our indigenous siblings, let's watch the video. Saved a wretch like me 
to share with you a prayer that our moderator, the Right Reverend Dr. Richard Bott, has written in light of the Black Lives Matter protests, as well as in recognition of our long history of colonialism in our relationships with our Indigenous siblings. His prayer is certainly challenging, but it is the same challenge of living into the gospel, into the good news of following the way of Jesus, into the resurrection promise of dying to old ways of being and then acting so that we can claim a new life of fullness. Let us be brave as we pray. Holy One, in your image you have created humankind in great diversity. We give thanks for the differences of cultures and ethnicities, of histories and life stories, of skin color and language and hearts that love the world. We watch in horror as power desecrates black, indigenous, and brown bodies, walks on their sacredness, kills and subjugates in thousands of ways, both hidden and overt. Help us, God of all our relations, to knowing we must not stop watching held back from right action by our horror or by our seeming powerlessness. Grant us hearts that listen and learn, egos that are willing to accept when our own racism is called out, 
when our own society's structural racism is revealed to our awareness. Grant us courage to disassemble the systems, the stories, the mythos that privilege whiteness over all other ways you have created us. Give us your Holy Spirit's wind to call out racism in all its forms inside our hearts, inside our church, inside your world, giving us the strength, the wisdom, the will, and the bravery to root out our white fragility and white supremacy so that such worldviews will never again do harm, never again take away, never again kill. Help us to be anti-racist in all that we say, in all that we do, in all that we are. Open our hearts so we truly understand that it is time. It is well past time. God of all creation, bless us all with what we need to walk on to live this work of anti-racism to be reconciled even as we repent today, every day, always. In Jesus' name, may it be so. Amen. I wanted to note that I will be on study leave next week. So this is the second last fireside chat before that time of study and learning for me. When I return, I will be reducing the fireside chats to once a week, just on Tuesdays. Just a little bit of balance in my life. I leave you with the blessing from the Cherokee spiritual tradition. May it bless us and guide us in our growing, in our learning, and in our transforming. O great spirit who made all races, look kindly upon the whole human family and take away the arrogance and hatred which separates us from our siblings. I pray that it may be so. Go in peace as you grow in understanding. Amen. Until next time. Bye-bye.